But if you have thin lips, go ahead and go for like the lighter stuff because lighter shades will make your lips look fuller as well. So if you're looking for like, um, go right back to garden again because she, she has this purple circle, or even amethyst. Like you can really tell with hers with the light purple that she has with hers. Very, very round, luscious lips. So it's very good to go and have like maybe a light purple armor for that too. For that um, and then of course with the darker with the darker shades it actually makes your lips look thin. Let's see here. And like lighting can always alter the way a makeup looks on you. Um, what I would do is that because the funny thing is that I went into I think it was Sephora. And when you step out of it really quickly, before your eyes adjust, you can kind of tell that their lights are always kind of like an orangish or yellowish. But that's because people always look the best under that type of light. The best way to go ahead and when you're trying to match a concealer or you're trying to find that perfect makeup or when you're donning a cosplay with a natural skin tone of a character. The best way to do it is actually go there like during the daylight because it could look great inside the shop, but then as soon as you step out the next day when you buy it, it could look completely horrible. You have that orange ring of death that I see so many Like the orange or like the light brown. A weird suntan. What's up? A weird suntan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, But the go ahead and definitely match yourself up the best would actually be with date. Um, and then, of course, you know, don't be afraid of using color. I'm wearing like five shades right now. Because there are certain guidelines that you can use with this type of stuff, but you don't want to limit yourself to creativity. Especially when it comes to the cosplay, there's so many things that you can do in the cosplay. It's, it's insane how much is blown up, much less what you can do. So don't be afraid of utilizing. When you go ahead and you shadow, uh, when, let's say if you're cosplaying as a Joker, you just put a white face on. You also have to remember that he is also, like that is his actual skin. Our skin isn't just one hue. There are different light browns, dark browns, like for me there are pinks and peaches and yellows and oranges, all even tones of green in certain people as well. Um, so don't be afraid to just have that one white streak. Use some of the color that's actually in your outfit to go ahead and emphasize that. Add a little bit of yellow when you're the Joker. Purples and greens to go ahead and try and contour, just to go ahead and take it from a 2D character to a 3D person. Because sometimes we forget that. It's just a character on a piece of paper. And we're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking to make it seem more realistic. Uh, let's do it. Um, yeah, and don't be afraid to think outside the box when choosing colors. If it seems completely out of line with your character, think why. Wonder why you think it's actually completely out of line. When I was in the Jack Cosplay a little bit earlier that you saw, I used completely white and black and then a few and a little bit of grays. But I also added a little bit of yellows as well because he is a skeleton. Skeletons age over time. We don't know how long that dude's been dead since before the movie. So, like, go ahead and take some real life <coughs> examples of things to go ahead and try and add a little bit more to that. Um, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of reds as well, because of course, you know, it's getting falls off and it becomes all gross and achy. Uh, a little bit of gray, a little bit of green. Um, because all these colors are natural. All these colors can be found. Uh, take into consideration your character's personality, characteristics, and environment. Um, when it came to that, I'll, I'll go back to Jack as well. When it came to that, I only used the grayscale because only when he was in like Christmas Town or when he was hooking up Zach, um, specifically, he was, I won't say he was. but um, <laughs> you know that was when he was introduced to color. Only really action scenes was when he had. The Tim Burton had the neon greens and pinks happening to him, with the bright red that Sally made the costume for him, all that kind of good stuff there. But I decided to go ahead and stick with the normal gray scale because I wasn't fighting any of these that day. Um, and then, like, once again, the only limitation of cosplay is your own, and that is your own imagination. So 
You can go ahead and you can definitely take these into consideration when you're working with your cosplay. But it, honestly, if you feel that something else is better, that's perfectly fine. It's your skin, it's your cosplay. Ain't nobody paying those bills with you. So that's how it has no problem. So these basically are, if you're a little bit afraid to try and experiment with colors, you can go ahead and you can start off slow with using this. It's what I'm saying. Uh, and then just work your way up to getting even more creative. Um, so that's basically my entire spiel. That's it. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yeah. Um, you mentioned using uh, colored contacts. How does, I've always wondered, because I need detergent contacts. Yeah. How does that work with getting, like, some of the stranger or more, like, custom looking contacts? Okay. Well, a lot of times with uh, custom contacts, there are certain companies that do different things, like some just up the pigmentation, uh -huh. but others actually go ahead and use color theory to go ahead and alter. So sometimes you can go, you can open up a package and just once you go ahead and describe the color that you have for your eyes, sometimes they can look a completely different color. Mm -hmm. But once it mixes with your eye color, it will completely turn into what you wanted it to be. Like, um, let's see here. I have a friend who actually has like really sharp blue, like oceanic blue eyes. So I was like, I don't know how you're gonna cover those up. But she actually went ahead, she wanted to get a gray, uh, a type of smoky gray to it. And they sent her a pair of orange contacts. And so once they went and put it on, it neutralized each other. And actually it was a perfect smoky gray that she wanted to get. So it really depends on what kind of company that you're working with. Um, you can definitely tell by the questions that they ask you when you order prior. Um, I usually go with Pinky Paradise. Um, and they just up the pigmentation of 13 on a scale of 10. So either way, if you want those pink contacts in your eyes, you're getting pink no matter what color your eyes are. <laughs>